Uh, I'm Shrikan, uh, Shrikan Mantha, working as a technology architect at Infosys uh, Limited, Amsterdam. Uh, today, uh, yeah, this is about me. Uh, I have um, 15 years of IT experience. I have worked with uh, several integration applications, uh, Apache Camel, Spring Integration, Tipco, and Web Method. So I can at least correlate uh, the difference between the, uh, these four uh, technologies. I can be reached out on this email, uh, Outlook, and also have an active profile on LinkedIn. <clears throat> So for today, uh, let us let me uh, brief you with the agenda of what I propose. Uh, let's start with the actual problem statement Let's and then um, get deep into the uh, solution of why I choose uh, Azure Storage Blob, um, how to access it, how to integrate it with Apache Camel and how Camel is helping us uh, make things, uh, make life easier. And followed by a, a high level overview of uh, architecture how uh, things put together um, and then with a short demo let's see how uh, the demo goes and then i would like to share some uh, performance uh, stats what i did with my uh, look uh, on, on my uh, laptop and then at the end with the references and q and a so let's get started with uh, the problem statement uh, what I want, um, what we want to build is a, a system where it can process uh, the customer's orders, which are coming in batches. When I say orders, it could be a shopping cart order, it could be a corporate order, or it could be a batch of payments, uh, which is done as a shopping in Amazon or any uh, portal. The corporate orders could be like you're placing orders for uh, laptops, desktops, um, or servers <clears throat> and you are trying to place the order in bulk so if you see this is how a sample uh, um, a payload looks like i have a batch uh, order at a high level and i have uh, multiple orders it could be a set of uh, products where i'm ordering a product id hp laptop uh, i place the order the and the customers i provide the customer details and the ship to i, I can also add the bill to sold to so i can have multiple flavors of it. And this is just a sample, um, a, sim a single order, but the payload can have, can be can be in a large volumes. It could be tens, hundreds, thousands, or could be even millions. Um, so we need to build a system which is uh, more robust enough to handle from all the data failures um, for the invalid content. And also, it should be resilient enough to resume back uh, from the point of failure where it uh, failed. Um, and then um, we should not forget that we are dealing with uh, customer's data confidentiality. It has to be accessed in a secured way. So the application should have um, application should have all the uh, features uh, available. And last but not the least. Uh, we are dealing with uh, multiple clients. People have different payload uh, data formats. Some want to send JSON. Some want to send CSV, XMLs. Uh, if it is a large payload, uh, I want to zip the XML and send it uh, in a zip file. So there are so many flavors of uh, the data format. So I would uh, like to have all of them uh, processed. Let's uh, get into the solution part. To get started with, I will give you a brief overview of what Microsoft Azure Blob Storage is all about. So in order to process all these payloads, we wanted to start, we, we were looking for uh, some kind of a file share FTP or SFTP, but that's not something allowed uh, in a corporate uh, world uh, because of its restrictions. And I want, I'm looking for a data store where I can um, access it, access the content, download the blob, copy the blob, upload it, uh, move between uh, different system, different different uh, directories or containers. So I need more flexibility and uh, I want to, and I, I want a um, very different set of data. So it should be able to uh, process an unstructured data. So with Azure uh, blob storage, it gives you um, an option for storing unstructured data. And if you see here, uh, let's see, 
if you see here this is a sample representation of how a storage account looks like a storage account is nothing but um, a single point of um, a url where you access to the storage container anywhere from the world using a http or https url securely and that will give you access to the container that you want to uh, look for the container is nothing but uh, simulate uh, look for like a directory um, in a file system so you have a storage account then you have containers i have shopping cart orders and which which uh, receive where i receive all my xml payloads i have corporate orders which are very huge and i expect them in gzip files and i have some payment orders which come in flat files so these are the three types of uh, resources which uh, is provided by the uh, blob storage um, it also has access, access uh, secured access uh, where you can actually configure uh, using an access key uh, not to forget <clears throat> we have a data store we have the options but we should also have a client library which we can use to integrate it with so we have uh, a client library but the latest version is version 12 which can be utilized to access through a, a rest api and uh, <clears throat> uh, start processing uh, the payloads so that's how the data uh, store this is how a, a sample uh, block storage looks like as i mentioned you have a secured uh, uh, URL. Uh, this is Apache Core 2021 is my storage container, uh, storage account. Batch request is my container within which I see payloads. I can lock the payloads, lease it, say that the file is locked. It cannot be processed by any other processor. It can be done by only one step at a time. So all those options are possible. Let's look into the uh, the main uh, section. Um, now we, we we talked about the data store. Now we need uh, 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 an integration layer which connects to the data store. Uh, Apache Apache Camel is an open source integration framework. It is basically uh, implementation of enterprise integration patterns, which solves a lot of complex integration problems people have already faced in the past. For each problem, you have an integration pattern. Um, Apache Camel connects with uh, more than 300 uh, plus components. Uh, what it does is uh, it provides an abstract layer to connect with these components. If you see in this diagram, I have Apache Camel here. All it does is it creates an abstraction layer to any cloud storage. Uh, in my use case, I talk about the Azure storage blob. Uh, but in future, if I want to move from Azure to AWS, it should be doable with uh, within less period of time because what i do is uh, in order to connect i provide a set of libraries i try to uh, access the storage accounts using a client provide the needed credentials i'm there I, I can access the content if i shift to aws i need aws s3 client i need the access key then i have the access to the aws s3 objects so uh, the main focus uh, uh, would be on connecting to the systems. The business logic will still remain the same. With the less code and um, faster um, uh, development time, this should be doable. And Apache uh, uh, Camel is a lightweight framework. Uh, I would say when compared to the, the Spring integration or the, um, the TIPCO and uh, web method uh, MQ. I had worked with Web Method MQ in the past. Uh, you need to open the broker and then you need to configure all those inboxes. It, it's a lot heavyweight tool. But with uh, with Camel, you can write your uh, code in Java and easily get started with what you want to achieve. So let me add a few more features which, uh, which I'm using in the application. Uh, Camel also provides automatic suspend and resume of routes. What it means is uh, we, we are connecting connecting with the different systems, could be a database, could be a file store, uh, or could be a web server, uh, which is prone to go down. So there could be planned or unplanned downtimes, uh, which we are not aware. Uh, with Camel, what the Camel what pro, uh, provides a feature where you, uh, the, it's called as the circuit breaker pattern, uh, which ensures that I don't process 
my my transactions when my web server is down so in this case uh, i'm processing the transactions from my storage container and sir and, and send those data to my web server but the web server is down so in that case uh, what i do is i say hey camel stop the processing stop uh, stop the polling from the uh, containers and then do a health check to the web server so and then this can be this can be a periodic operation where it continues like every one second or two second and once the web server is up and running then it gives you the response back and then you have the response so in this so so this uh, with this feature uh, it's of less less code you can do it automatically you can also do it manually by configuring the control bus with more control <clears throat> the next feature is uh, camel provides a graceful shutdown uh, so what this means is my application is processing millions of transactions and it is possible that uh, I'm deploying my application at the same time. Um, I have my application running in two different uh, instances and I want to ensure that, um, I want to ensure that the processing continues. So with this property, which we, what we can say is, uh, there is a minimum time where it says uh, like 45 seconds is the default. Uh, until 45 seconds, I will continue to process all the in-flight transactions at that point in time uh, before the application uh, is shut down. In that way, I ensure that I don't miss any uh, process, any transactions. I don't, I don't miss any transactions and then I process them completely. So uh, the next, uh, on the next slide, uh, I would like to talk about the integration with uh, Spring Boot. Um, with, with the Spring Boot context, um, it's easier to develop and integrate with uh, Camel. What Spring Boot does is it uh, loads all the Camel uh, resources, all the needed uh, 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 resources uh, on the runtime when the Spring context is loaded. And that ensures that the Camel context is able to detect them and uh, start creating a binding. We are talking about uh, a consumer-based application. It's not like a Spring, uh, Spring uh, web application. So uh, my consumer application should always be up and running. And um, I want to ensure that uh, in order to do that, uh, I need to configure this property, which makes Camel to run as a main controller thread. In that case, Camel will run as a main thread. And then the routes are active and running. And then it starts, it starts the processing. The next feature is, uh, yes, the integration with uh, testing. Uh, Camel together with Spring Boot uh, uh, has a lot of uh, features to write JUnit test cases, integration test cases. We need to add a couple of annotations like Camel Spring Boot, um, and a couple of them are there. Uh, with this, uh, it's very easier to uh, write JUnit test cases to test your routes and also the business logic. In order to integrate with uh, Spring Boot, uh, we need uh, to add the needed dependencies. I've just uh, highlighted them, and they should be uh, they should be known. Yeah. <clears throat> Let's uh, get into the how part uh, from a development perspective. Uh, now that we know uh, all the features that uh, Camel provides, how do we get started? So, in order to integrate the Azure Storage Blob, I need to add the the needed dependencies, the Camel Azure Storage Blob the SDK uh, from Microsoft Azure. Uh, the latest one is 12.14, I see. Once you have uh, a Maven project created, uh, what we need to do is uh, we have to start creating routes. The route is nothing but um, a flow for uh, my message to say that I want to read data from source A to destination B. Um, so in my case, uh, I want to read all my uh, blocks I want to list all the blobs from my container, which is inside my storage account as part of the Azure storage. And I want to do this uh, periodically for a fixed duration of every 10 seconds. So that means it goes to the Azure blob, does a poll, checks if there are any files in the, in the container. If there are any, then it starts listing them. 
So once I have the once I have the needed blob information, I would like to process them. The processing could be like transforming the payload, uh, do some calculations, call the um, web server, get a response that way. In order to do that, uh, to make things simpler and uh, with um, less uh, with more configuration and less code, uh, we can actually customize these routes with Spring configuration. If you see here in this diagram, what I say is what I'm doing is I have a route. Uh, to process all my shopping cart orders. I give a route name and I say that uh, please process from this request container. And once the request is processed, transformed, please drop the please drop the response in this response container. And if something goes wrong, uh, maybe a failure, maybe the input is invalid, could be anything. In that case, please drop the uh, response, uh, please drop the request into this error container. And when you create this configuration and start the application, Camel will start a route, a timer uh, basically uh, for this route ID. We can also specify the blob type that we are dealing with in the, in the, the configuration. And if I want to add, uh, if I want to onboard another client, uh, probably with the same uh, block type, then all I need to know, all I need to do is create another request response error container, give a different route ID, and then uh, provide the uh, the block type. In this case, it is gzip. So you may have to write some uh, processing or the transformation to read the gzip files. But if it is another uh, consumer with the same XML, then it is pretty much easy. So what Camel will do is, it will create route per request container, and then it will start reading from that, start reading the payload. <clears throat> so let's uh, talk a bit about the architecture, uh, uh, put all, uh, all the things put, to, put together. Uh, I have uh, a consumer, a shopping cart orders. He will drop the XML payload into the request container and I have the uh, Camel applications deployed on an Azure VM, um, which, which is actually reading from the request container. It's doing a continuous poll. So once I have the XML payload read, all I'm going to do is um, I'm going to check if this is a new order or uh, an existing order by calling a REST API to see if the, for, to see if the record already exists. If it is a new order, then it calls the server, gets the PO, the purchase order, saves in the database, and then you get the response back. Once you have the response rendered, uh, we construct the rec we construct the response and drop it into the uh, the response uh, container. From here, uh, my consumer is uh, doing a read on the response container the same way how how, how uh, I, I'm doing it. So it is more like a request response cycle. Uh, from uh, both the consumer as well as uh, uh, from the producer side. In case if uh, the, in case if the input has an issue, then it goes to the error container. And let me talk uh, more on the scalability point of view. So, as I mentioned, for each consumer, we have a request container. So, Camel is creating uh, threads to read from uh, the request container. So it will read one file at a time. In case if we want to, if in case if we have a lot of consumers, we want to read from multiple uh, uh, consumers with the different uh, uh, containers, then it is very easy to scale because what we are creating is um, a Camel Spring Boot application, which is deployed as a jar file. Uh, and it should not take much time to deploy the same application into another uh, VM. So if we if we have to scale up, we add uh, Azure, uh, more virtual machines, deploy the application there, and then we we are good to go. So let me quickly show a demo here. What I plan to show is just want to show the way how it works uh, the working model i have created a sample application which actually where i can upload the response upload the request and then i see a response 
So this is my batch container. Let me see if the application is running. Let me start the application. And I, okay. That is my web server where it will generate the purchase order for me. Okay, so I have my application up and running. Uh, this is the route which has created. Now, let me go ahead and upload a blog. I choose a small blog uh, to get started with. I upload into the request container. Then let's see the processing here. So what it does here is uh, what it what it's doing. Um, I want to ensure that when I pick up when I pick a block, no other uh, uh, instance is uh, going to pick the same block, uh, reprocess the same content, generate the different purchase order. So in order to do that, I'm creating a lease. It's like a lock on the block. So I say that I'm acquiring a lease on this payload. Then I start the processing. I make a call to my web server. I get the yeah, I generate the order number and then I upload the response object into the uh, the response container. Let's let's see that. If I go to batch response SEO, I see the payload here. Let's see how it looks like. I've created a simulation of uh, the way how it looks like. So what it is doing is it has a, um, a simple uh, structure with the batch order response. It has a request, uh, a request ID, and then it generates the purchase order. Yeah. So once we have the response in the response container, we also want to ensure that uh, the request uh, doesn't stay here. So yeah, it's deleted. So what we say is, yeah, it's deleted and then we finish the processing. This is just one scenario. Uh, I want to I actually want to show an error scenario for which I need to make a small change. Unfortunately, it did not work. So let me just quickly uh, make a change, start the application again and show you. Uh, if I upload an, an XML with an invalid content, it should land into the error container. Okay, there it's created. So let me take a blog with an invalid content. Uh, invalid schema, yeah. I've uploaded it. Let's see, it starts processing. It says, uh, yeah, the, the, the file is picked up. It says validation failed. It's unable to read the blog. So it is moving to the error container. And it also ensures that the request, the original request is deleted. And if I go now, one step back to the patch error container, I see the file. Yeah. So uh, coming back. So uh, what I have uh, done as the um, next step uh, to talk about uh, the performance, what I have done is I've created a simulation 
of how fast can we actually process the files because in this world yeah we really have to process the files faster uh, generate the response how fast can the application uh, generate so i've created a simulation of uh, the example that i have shown here um, with uh, a payload of size 10 a size 100 for for size 10 it takes like 200 milliseconds all these responses are on milliseconds uh, with 100 it takes like 303 milliseconds and yeah for, for a thousand it takes uh, hardly half a millisecond but this uh, simulation is uh, not including all the business logic uh, but when you add the, all the complex business logic it should still be able to uh, do pretty much faster because you have the application which is uh, very lightweight and it's, it's able to read the content from the uh, data store uh, and also Azure API uh, provides a faster uh, access uh, to the blocks. In that way, it makes my application uh, uh, performance uh, better in performance. I can scale it. It, it is secure enough um, to process. And also, I can add all the needed logic to make it more resilient and robust. So uh, moving on to the last slide, uh, the references. Um, I have created a sample um, application to, uh, to as a simulation. Uh, the code can be found in the GitHub. And other references are provided here uh, to get started uh, for any integration with uh, Azure Blob. Any questions? I don't see any questions, but thank you for the presentation. I think it has been very easy to follow how Camel works and how all this works.